Welcome to this video on specific intensity where we try to answer the question, what's the flux? Now although that makes a really good title, I have to admit I'm being a little misleading when I say what's the flux. Flux is energy per time per area and has units of ergs per second per centimeter squared. But it turns out this isn't quite enough information. What's carrying this energy? What direction did it come from? These are questions that flux doesn't answer. So here's a case that I think might motivate some of the shortcomings of flux even more clearly. Suppose you've got two little astronomers on two different planets here, both observing the star over here with their telescopes. And we'll say that this first planet is at a distance r1 away from that star, and this other planet is a distance r2, where r2 is different than r1. We'll say it's bigger. Now we know as we get farther and farther away from a star, we get less and less energy from that star, just because the light from that star drops off as 1 over r squared. So we could write, for example, that the flux here on planet 1 is equal to whatever the energy output of the star is, luminosity, in ergs per second, divided by 4 pi r1 squared. Whereas over at this second planet here, we would measure flux F2 that's equal to the same luminosity of that star, but now it's divided by a different surface over which that energy must be divided, 4 pi r2 squared. So these two different astronomers on different planets are not going to be able to agree on the flux that they receive from the star. So here's the question. Is there a quantity that these two different astronomers could agree on about this star? And the answer is, of course, yes, there is a quantity that they can agree on. It is the brightness of that star. So what is brightness? Well, to illustrate what brightness is, let's imagine that I have two different stars, a small one that glows very brightly and a larger one that doesn't glow quite as brightly. So to a little astronomer here looking at these two different stars, you could imagine that in a given area, as much light from this small bright star goes through that area as comes in through the same area from this other star. And the reason it could be the same amount of energy per second is because although this one glows less brightly over here, there's just a larger area on the sky that's emitting light that goes through that region. So we can have two stars, the same flux from them, but they have different brightnesses. And also, critically, in order to have the same flux, they had to have different sizes. And the fact that they have different sizes tells us something about what brightness is. Brightness is a flux per angular area. To this astronomer sitting here on the ground looking at these two different stars, one of which is larger but less bright, to get the same flux, that brightness had to be multiplied by a larger area. And it turns out brightness is something that all astronomers can agree on. Let's go back to our example above with our two astronomers, each two different distances away from the same star, R1 and R2. Astronomer 1 measure the flux equal to the luminosity of that star divided by 4 pi times R1 squared. And the second astronomer measured a different flux, F2, that was the same luminosity of that star divided by 4 pi R2 squared. But now let's ask, how big did that star look like to these two different astronomers in terms of an angle on the sky? To this first astronomer, who is a distance r1 away from the star, if this is the radius of the star here, r star, then this angle right here, which I'll call theta, if the star is very far away so that r star is much smaller than r1, we'll just use the small angle approximation and say that theta is approximately r star over r1. Now the star isn't just a one angle here, it takes up a two-dimensional space on the sky, so we actually need to calculate the angular area here, which I'll just do assuming that it's a circle and say that it's pi times theta squared, which in our small angle approximation would be pi times r star squared over r1 squared. And similarly, our different astronomer over here on planet number two would, exert, would observe an angular area of pi theta two squared, which would be approximately equal to pi times the radius of that star squared over r2 squared. All right, so if we then try to calculate a brightness that is equal to a flux divided by an angular area here, and often I'll use shorthand capital omega to mean a two-dimensional angle here. So flux divided by angular area. In case one here, it's equal to the luminosity divided by four pi r1 squared. And then I'm just gonna flip over this omega here 
and say that this is times r1 squared over pi r star squared. And as you can see, the distance that I am from the star cancels out here, and I get a quantity that depends only on intrinsic properties of the star, the luminosity and the radius of the star. And you can see that if we constructed this exact same quantity for astronomer 2, similarly, the two radii of the distance of that planet from the star would cancel out, and we get the exact same quantity. So brightness is something that all astronomers can agree on. And brightness has units of ergs per second per centimeter squared per solid angle on the sky. We measure angles in radians. We measure solid angles in steradians, which I'll abbreviate SR. So that's what brightness is. And another word for brightness is intensity, the intensity of the light. Now there's one more property of light that we haven't quite captured here. Suppose I have two stars here, but now one, the more intense one that's farther away is a blue star that's burning very hotly and glowing at blue wavelengths primarily, whereas my nearby star with the same luminosity but less bright is a red giant. Now one can imagine that these two different stars have a lot of properties in common. Maybe we're receiving the same flux from them, maybe they have different brightnesses, but something needs to tell us about the fact that one of these is blue and one of these is red. So what about color? And of course this idea of color extrapolates more generally Color is just the wavelength of the light that we're getting, which in turn is just the frequency of the light, the frequency of the oscillations of the electromagnetic field. So when we are talking about the luminosity of a star, over what range are we measuring this luminosity? Is it all colors? Is it only optical? Is it only infrared? Are we measuring the radio flux? Do we include ultraviolet? To agree on the measurements, you need to know what range of frequencies did you measure. So first of all, to really agree on our measurements, we have to know what frequency we were centered at. So if we had intensity i, we would like to document it as a function of frequency. And secondly, we would like to divide by the frequency interval that we measured over. And when we do this, this puts the specific in specific intensity. Specific means per frequency, or in this case, per hertz. So finally, we end up with what's actually specific intensity, which we'll write as I sub nu. It's our specific intensity, and it has units of ergs per second per centimeter squared per steradian per hertz. So basically, it's energy per every unit you can imagine dividing out by. Seconds, area, angle, and hertz. And just to warn you, you might see a seconds here and a hertz here. You might say, oh, seconds times hertz. I can just cancel those units. And yes, technically you could write this as ergs per centimeter squared per steradian, but that would be incredibly misleading. Never, ever, ever do that. Specific intensity is an energy per second that you're getting over an area from an angle on the sky per certain bandwidth. And to cancel out units would obscure what you're actually constructing here. That's basically all there is to it. So here are some nice things about specific intensity. It's intrinsic to the source, everyone can agree on it, and it doesn't matter how far away you are from it. And another way of saying that is that specific intensity is conserved along a ray, or the path that the light propagates along. So these properties make specific intensity a very useful quantity for astronomers, but also make it useful for any situation in which we're tracing light along a ray and examining how it changes or doesn't change along that path. And that's specific intensity.